Okay, so, hello and welcome. Uh, this is the third lecture on the basic uh, on digital electronics. And uh, in this lecture, uh, we shall talk about the negative representation of binary representation of the negative numbers and uh, we shall also talk about the basic logic gates and then I will uh, review the Boolean algebra. Uh, these are the three topics which we are going to cover in this class. Okay. So, negative number as you know that in uh, decimal number system, it is very easy to represent negative numbers. Okay. What we do? We put a minus sign before a number. For example, if I have to uh, represent a negative number minus 17, what I will do? I will write 17 with a minus sign. Okay. Or if I have to write minus 22, then uh, I write 22 with this minus sign that is minus 22. Okay. But this facility, this is not available in a binary system. Okay. In binary, our computer understands the language of, I mean, only uh, 1 and 0. In term, it thinks in terms of 1 and 0 only, no sign. So, how, how should we assign a negative number, I mean, in binary number system? So, there are uh, basically three schemes to represent a uh, negative number in binary system. Okay. And these three schemes are as follows. The number one is sign magnitude representation. Sign magnitude representation. Then once complements representation. And we have uh, this two's complement representation. Okay. So, in sign magnitude representation, what we do? We use one additional digit, we use one additional bit, okay, and that bit indicates a number. For example, uh, let us say that we have to represent a uh, number minus 7. Okay. So, minus 7 can be uh, represented by 3 uh, bit binary number, is it or not? And what will be that binary number? 1, 1 and 1, 3, 1. Okay, but this 3 1 you can only uh, assign, I mean, this 3 1 can represent a positive number 7 only. Okay. What we do in sign magnitude, we use one additional bit, okay. that additional bit may be fourth bit here, this is, this is our additional bit, it may be 0 or 1. Okay. So, the this additional bit, if it is 0, it represents plus 7. Okay. And if I uh, write 1 here as additional bit, then this 1, 1, 1, 1 represents minus sign, uh, minus 7. So, this is plus 7 and this one represents minus 7. Okay. Is it clear? So, please note here the fourth digit is not, will not be counted in the weight of that number. It is just representing the sign. Okay. So, plus sign that is a positive number starts with 0, negative number starts with a 1. Okay. That is done in this sign magnitude representation. Okay. But you see that the problem with this scheme is we need one additional uh, bit to represent the sign for that particular number. Okay. Is it clear? The once complement 
is also used to represent a negative number okay and uh, for example if i have to represent this minus 17 in one's complement okay then the one compli one's complement representation for this let us take another example, let us take uh, 7, minus 7 because we have already done for that. So, for minus 7, if I go for 2's uh, one's complement representation, it simply uh, be the 2's complement of this binary representation that will be 0, 0, 0 and 1. Okay getting this point. The binary representation for 7 plus 7 is 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay. When you take its 2's com, uh, 1's complement that becomes a negative number that refers minus 7. Okay. Getting this point. So, what you have to do? You have to simply take the complement or 1's complement of that number that will give you equivalent negative number. So, for plus 7 this 0, 1, 1 in sign magnitude 1, 1, 1, 1 minus 7 in sign magnitude, but this 1 0 0 rep, uh, says uh, refers minus 7 in 1's complement system, in 1's complement representation. Okay. And similarly, we can also uh, use 2's complements uh, representation to uh, have a uh, to re refer a negative number. Okay. For example, if I have to refer uh, I, if I have to write this minus 7 in 2's complement uh, representation, then the 2's complement representation for this number will be simply 1, 1, 1, 0, 0 and then 1. So, in 2's complement this 1, 0, 0, 1 refers minus 7. Okay. So, this is minus 7 in 2's complement representation. Okay. So, basically this 1's complement and 2's complements are used to represent negative number. Okay. As we have already done uh, those subtraction and you saw that how we uh, went for uh, the 2's complement, okay. then we add, uh, then we uh, added the uh, two number, original number with the two's complement of the second number and we got the difference. Okay. So, it was because that the second number uh, was represented, I mean uh, was uh, represented in this manner was given a negative sign, I mean uh, it was converted into a negative number and then that negative number was directly added to the first number in order to get the difference. Okay. So, these are uh, the basic, uh, these are the three schemes which are actually used for uh, this uh, negative number representation in binary scheme. Okay. The first one sign magnitude where we use one additional bit to uh, represent the sign, a 0 refers positive number, a 0 at the most significant bit position refers positive number, a 1 at the most significant bit position represents a negative number. Okay a one's complement with one's complement you can have a negative number similarly with two's complement you can also re represent a negative number okay is it clear then, uh, in that minus seven, it hmm. the first yes one 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 uh, below that, yes, this is for minus 7. Because for 7 you have to only use 3 bit, okay. but here you are using uh, one additional bit, fourth bit and it, it is already uh, computer is programmed for that. Okay. Even you may represent a 7 in 8 digit, 8 digit representations, you can use 8 digits to represent a 7. Okay. And uh, those 8 digits will be changed accordingly following this rule. So, computer knows that. Okay. 
that uh, this particular scheme is being followed. Okay. Because computer knows that uh, that is dealing with two complement. Okay, if if it is everything if not clear, then you can see that uh, one sequence can represent two number. Okay, but if it is one zero zero one coming, then that computer knows that it is the two complement of this number. Okay. Otherwise, it will be difficult to distinguish. Now let me introduce the concept of logic gates. Okay, logic gates are basically basic building block of a digital circuit design to uh, implement a bigger circuit. These uh, basic logic gates are used. For example. Uh, the processor of your computer can be implemented or can be designed using large number of logic gates. Okay. So, logic gates are basically the basic building blocks for the digital circuit design. So, here I am going to tell you about uh, the uh, different kind of logic gates and I will also discuss the truth table for those logic gates. Okay. So, let us start with the simplest possible logic gate which is a NOT gate. Okay. Not gate is uh, the simplest possible logic gate. Okay. It is represented by uh, this triangle with a circle here. Okay. If the input given to this not gate is A, then and let us say that its output is Y then the behavior of this not gate, behavior of this gate uh, can be uh, is given in a table that is called the truth table. Okay. For the different possible inputs, uh, the outputs are given in that table that is called the truth table here. So, let me write the truth table for this, it is truth table. In short, we can say it is T T. Okay. So, the truth table for this NOT gate is if the input is A and output is Y. So, since the there is one input, so there will there are two possibilities for this input. Okay. That will be either 0 or 1. So, if the input is 0, this inverter simply inverts that input the inward flip of that uh, given input appears at the output terminal. So, for this 0 input we will get 1 and similarly, if the input is 1 we will find the 0 as a output. Okay. And uh, we just uh, we can mathematically uh, write this y in term of a y is written as a bar that means complement of a this is operator complement is, uh, is an operator which is used in the boolean algebra okay so complement simply means whatever the input is the flip I, I mean the reverse of that will appear at the output terminal if the input is 0 output 1 for the input 1 the output will be 0 that is the and gate okay and gate can be uh, implemented using uh, the mosfets or bjt's Okay, but that we'll will not discuss here. That we'll talk about uh, those implementation when we'll be talking uh, the transistors in detail. Okay. Then the next gate is our AND gate.
okay so and gate uh, is basically uh, represented by this symbol it is a logic multiplication of the input it performs the logic multiplication for example if there are two inputs a and b and the output here is y so y is actually given as a dot b that means the logic multiplication of a and b okay and the truth table can also be written for this and gate similarly so input here are a and b and the output is y so there are two variables in the input so there will be four combination those combinations are 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 okay so for both even both, in, both inputs are zero the output will be zero for zero 1 it will be zero for 1 0 it will be zero and for 1 1 it is 1 okay that you can verify with this equation y equal to a dot b or a multiplication b means when both inputs are 1 then only the output is going to be 1 okay for other combinations of the input the output is to be 0 okay so the and gate simply performs a logic multiplication okay it performs a logic multiplication and then uh, let's talk about the r gate as a next one it performs this r gate performs the logic addition okay please note that it is not the actual addition of two digit okay it's logic addition that means uh, if the two inputs are uh, basically if the two inputs are a and b and the output is y so y is given as a plus b okay it's not the addition of the two digit as we did in the addition of two binary numbers okay it's logic addition here 1 plus 1 means 1 not 10 one, 1 plus 1 doesn't means 2 here it means 1 okay and the symbol for this r gate is it is like this basically it is a two input R gate we can have even large number of inputs more inputs the output is y so if the inputs are more than two then let us say that if there are three inputs a b and c so our output will be y equal to a plus b plus c and so on depending upon the input okay and the truth table for uh, this R gate is to be A, B are the input, Y is the output. So, combination for the input is combination of the inputs are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1 1 these are four possible combination with the two variables so output is going to be 0 1 1 and 1 okay please notice here that when both inputs are 0 then only we get the 0 as a output if, if any of the input is 1 then our output is to be 1 okay then we have another gate called xor gate that is exclusive or gate exclusive or gate it 
exclusive R gate, it is also called exclusive R gate. It basically compares if we uh, talk about the two input XOR gate, it compares the two inputs. Okay. If the both inputs are different, it provides a output 1, high logic. Okay. If the both inputs are same, then it provides the 0 as a output. Getting this? That means, let me write the truth table for this XOR gate. But before, uh, let me draw the symbol for this XR gate. The symbol for this XR gate is the extension of that of this R gate. Like this, here we have two inputs A and B and the output is Y. Okay. Please note the difference in the symbols, compare these symbols with that of the R gate, what do you see that there is a small difference in the representation here. Okay. And uh, the input outputs are related by the following equation, Y is actually written as A XOR B. Okay. This is the symbol for XR operation. Okay. And what this XR operation means that you can notice from the truth table for the XR gate. The inputs A and B, the output is Y, the combinations of the input is 0, R00, 0, 0, 0, 01, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So, as I told you that this XR gate compares the two inputs. Okay. For example, uh, just look here, here the both inputs are same 0, 0. So, it provides the output 0, both are same. If the difference is there in the inputs, then basically it responds to that input and it gives a high logic or 1 as a output. Okay. So, in this case 0, 1, it will give us 1 output for 1 0 it will give 1 output and again for 1 1 it is going to give us 0 output. Okay. So, a function more detailed boolean function for this y uh, for this XR gate will I will give that to you later on okay, when we will be discussing the boolean algebra. We will uh, just investigate this table once again and uh, we, we can find a suitable more elaborative expression between input and outputs in that case. Okay. Then there are two uh, more important gates, those are called NOR gate and NAND gate. Okay. So, a NOR gate uh, basically inverts the output of an R gate, I mean the output in a NOR gate is just the reverse of the output of a R gate okay. and the symbol for the NOR gate is that of similar to the R gate except a bubble at the output. This bubble indicates the reverse of the output. Okay. So, if I take two inputs here A and B, A and B and the output to be Y in this case. So, Y is related here with A and B as Y equal to A plus B that was supposed to be here without this circle, but this circle indicates the reverse of this operation that means the output y is going to be a plus b bar. Okay. And I can also write the truth table based on this equation, based on the characteristics of this NOR gate. If the inputs, two inputs are a, b and the output is y, then in this case, 
the four possible inputs are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So, output in this case 0 plus 0, 0 that is the reverse inverse of that. So, here I will find 1. Okay. What about here? Speak loudly 0, 0 and 0. Okay. So, that is the inverse of an R gate. Output is the inverse of that of and two input R gate. Okay. And the NAND gate NAND gate for the uh, NAND gate the symbol is similar to that of AND gate with this difference the circle at the output uh, uh, towards the output two inputs if those are A and B then the output in this case y will be a dot b complement okay complement of a dot b so you can notice here that the output is output in the case of nand gate is the inverse of that of two input and gate okay and similarly we can write the truth table for the nand gate that is the input a b and output y so the possible combinations are 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so in this case it is 1 1 1 and 0 okay We have one more uh, logic gates left that is called the buffer. Okay. The buffer is represented by a symbol, triangular symbol if input of this buffer is A and output is Y, so the output Y is simply A, okay. no change in the output, whatever you give as a input that will appear at the output terminal okay. and the truth table for this buffer is for the input A if the output is Y, so for 0 input the output is 0, for the 1 input the output is 1. Okay. So, al although it seems to be useless because whatever you are giving as a input that appears at the output terminal, okay. but the buffers are very useful in digital circuit design. Okay. One of the use of the buffer is to increase the fan out of a digital circuit. Okay. Fan out means uh, the maximum number of the next stage circuits which can be driven by the particular for the, uh, uh, driven by the circuit or the logic of our interest. For example, let us say that we have a uh, AND gate, okay. two input, one output AND gate. So, there, there is one output here. Okay. Now, let us say that we have to place this AND gate in a bigger circuit where there are many more uh, other blocks followed by followed by this block. Oh, there, there are subsequent blocks as well okay. and we have to connect, uh, we have to take this output as a input for various blocks. Okay. So, how many maximum blocks can we use at a time? So, that number is basically called the fan out. If I can drive 10 other blocks by this input it is said that the fan output fan out for this AND gate is to be 10. Okay. We cannot increase, we cannot use more than 10 blocks to drive by this uh, by this logic state, I mean by this logic circuit, okay, by this AND gate. Getting my point. So, here what, what I wanted to tell you that 
we can use the buffer and increase the number of fan outs. If I put buffer, I can increase the fan out from 10 to 12 or 15 like that. Okay. Is it making sense? Okay. The another uh, advantage of uh, the buffer is uh, sometime you see that in digital circuit we need to produce delay. Sometime delay is important. Okay. For example, just uh, consider the situation. Let us say that we have a digital blocks, big, I mean bigger system which has multiple blocks. Okay. And basically this is a relatively bigger block than this block. This block is performing many operations to this input. Okay. And this block is performing less number of steps, less number of I mean uh, less number of operation on this given inputs. Okay. So, let us say that this block takes larger time compared to longer time compared to this block okay. and the output of both blocks are given to an adder circuit here, not adder but let us say that to R gate. Okay. So, this R gate is expected to add this, I mean uh, it is expected to perform R operation to this input and this input, but let us say that this input is coming after, I mean this input is coming first and after certain time the another input is coming. So, there is a delay okay, because this block is taking more time compared to this block. So, what we can do? We can introduce some buffer here. Okay, and that buffer will uh, create the required time delay in order to ev uh, avoid this time mismatch problem. Okay. So, buffer can produce the desired amount of delay in a circuit okay. apart from uh, being used uh, as uh, to increase the fan out of a given logic circuits okay, or given logic state. Okay. Now, uh, let me introduce the concept of Boolean algebra. Boolean algebra is uh, basically the mathematics of uh, logic. Okay. It is the mathematics of the uh, uh, logical function. There are certain rules under uh, this Boolean algebra which are used to simplify the logical statements or logical function you can say. Okay. So, this Boolean algebra is uh, basically uh, introduced in 1854 by uh, a scientist, his name was uh, George Bully. From his name, uh, this uh, term Boolean algebra uh, was derived. Okay. It is based, it, it is uh, after the name of George Bully. Okay. And uh, if I have to formally define this uh, Boolean algebra, then I will say that the Boolean algebra is a set which has few operators, Boolean uh, operators, Boolean operators plus R and the and multiplication. Okay. It has uh, the Boolean operation R and and apart from R and and it also has a unary operation that is complement. Okay. It has few, uh, it has two Boolean operators R and 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 a unary operators that is complement. Okay. And apart from that, it also has variables okay. and that variables may be 0 or 1 
it also has variable 0 and 1 and few postulates. Okay. So, all these uh, things uh, together makes the completes the Boolean algebra. Okay. Boolean algebra includes few operator, those operators are and are complement variable that may be 0 and 1 and apart from these two it also includes uh, some postulates. Okay. These postulates are rule and regulations are important for minimizing the large or complex Boolean functions. Okay. For example, uh, if I uh, say that a given uh, logical function is let us say that it is y that is output equal to a bar b bar c bar d bar plus a bar b bar c bar d plus a b bar c bar d bar plus a b bar c bar d. Okay. So, what you see that we have a logical statement or logical expression y that is written in term of four inputs variable, these variables are a, b, c and d. Okay. This logical function y is written in term of four input variables a, b, c, d, few operators are used, operators we have the R operation here and the AND operation is also there, but that is not shown here. Basically, it is a, b, c, d means a dot b dot c dot d in bracket. Okay. Then complement a, complement b, complement c d in bracket. Okay. If no uh, operator is shown here, then it means it is simply multiplication. Okay. So, here I can use the Boolean algebra, the theorems postulates of Boolean algebra in order to simplify this given logic function. Okay. Why this simplification is important? The simplification is important because it can save you the hardware in the circuit design. Okay. For example, if you have to implement this given uh, logic function with uh, if you have to implement this given statement, you need large number of R gate and AND gate. Is it or not? Because here R operation is done, AND operation is done A, B, C, D. Okay. So, if you are given with uh, 4 input AND gate, uh, uh, 4 input AND gate, then you need one AND gate here another one AND gate here, here and here, then you need some R gate, 3 input R gate or if the 2 inputs R gate are available, then you need more. Okay. So, what I uh, want to tell you that if the given expression is very complex or large, you need to use large number of logic gates to implement that. Okay. But if somehow using the postulates of Boolean algebra, if I can simplify this, uh, this uh, given uh, logical expression to a smaller, way, uh, to a smaller one, okay, then the final implementation can, uh, final implementation may need even smaller number of logic gates. Okay. For example, if I apply the uh, all most, uh, apply the rules of the Boolean algebra to this given function what I can find here is y is simply b bar c bar. Okay. If I apply the rules, the theorems of the Boolean algebra and to simplify this given logic function, I find that it is this expression reduces to simply b bar c bar. Okay. So, what you see that now we can implement the same function using a AND gate, one AND gate. 
okay, and the two complement, two uh, inverters, okay, two not gate you can say. With two not gate and one AND gate, I can implement the same function, which was actually needed large number of AND gates and R gates. Okay, so the theorems of Boolean algebra can be used to simplify the long logic expression or complex logic expressions without changing the functionality. Okay, if you investigate the truth table of this function and this function you will find the same. I mean both are similar, both are same. Okay. So, why to use so many gates here to implement this function? We can do the same with the very small, I mean few, using few gates we can implement this function. Okay. So, that is the objective, uh, our objective here. We will use the postulates and the theorems of Boolean algebra in order to simplify the logical expression like this. Okay. So, let me give you those postula postulates of the Boolean algebra, the theorems of Boolean algebra first, okay. then you can use those theorems to solve few example problems. Okay. So, the theorems of Boolean algebra, first in first column I will write their name, then uh, that theorem in AND form. and finally in R form. Okay. So, the first theorem is called identity law. Identity law. So, identity law says that in AND form it is 1 dot A is equal to A. Okay. If the variable is A and if you multiply that variable by 1, you get the same variable A. Okay. That you can verify, A may be 0 or 1. Okay. If A is 1, then 1 into 1 is 1, that is A. If A is 0, then 0 into 1 is 0. Okay. So, a dot 1 is always equal to a okay. and this can also be represented in R form. In R form it is 0 plus a that is equal to a. Okay. Then we have uh, the second law for the Boolean algebra that is uh, called null law, null law. This states that 0 dot A is always 0 and in R form it always say that it says that 1 plus A is always 1. Okay. That is also uh, self explanatory you can see if you multiply if you uh, multiply anything with 0 will always get 0. Okay. And if you add 1 to a variable, you will always get 1. If it is it's not add, if you perform the R operation with a variable, if the variable is 0, then you get 1 plus 0, 1. If the variable is 1, then you get 1 plus 1 is 1. Okay. Then uh, we have uh, the next law that is Dempotent law. It says that A dot A is always equal to A 
and a plus a is also equal to a. Okay. A dot a, the, that means 1 dot 1, 1 and 1 is 1. Okay. And similarly, 1 plus 1 is 1 or 0 plus 0 is 0. Is it clear? So, a dot a is always a, a plus a is always a. Then we have inverse law. Inverse law states that a dot a dot a dot a complement is always zero. Okay. If you, if, you, if you say if you select a is 1 then 1 into 0 0 okay if it is 0 0 into 1 is 0 okay and similarly in the r form it is a plus a bar a plus a bar is always 1 okay 0 plus 1 is 1 or 1 plus 0 is 1 Then we have next law that is called commutative law. Commutative law that says that a dot b is equal to b dot a. If you have two variable a and b, so and you are doing the R op, uh, and operation, okay, it does not matter what sequence you take? If you take a dot b or b dot a, both are equal, both are same. Okay. And similarly, it is also true for the in R form, in R, R form it becomes a plus b equal to b plus a. Okay. So, if you whether you take 0 plus 1 or 1 plus 0, both gives you the same result. Okay. Then associative law, associative law uh, says that A dot B dot C is not different from A dot B dot C and that is also equal to a dot b dot c. Okay. That means, if you have to perform AND operation for 3 variables a and b, a, b and c. So, it does not matter whether you do this a, b first, then go for, uh, then you uh, use this third variable c. Okay. Or if you perform b, c first, then you use this uh, third variable, uh, first variable a. Okay both cases you get the same result and that will be equal to a dot b dot c. Okay. And similarly, this uh, expression in R form says that a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c. Okay. Basically, it does not depend upon the sequence. I mean, you can add a plus b first then add c to get the final result or add b plus c first and add a to you will get the same result in both cases. Okay. Then distributive law, it is important and used more often. Distributive law okay. Distributive law in R form states that A plus B C is actually A plus B into A plus C and A plus C. 
okay it is not here a plus b c is a plus b into a plus c okay when you will be simplifying the complex boolean function you will be using this very regularly so please uh, look at this carefully okay and in our r form it is a b plus c to be a b plus a c okay and then we have absorption law absorption law states that a dot a plus b is can you tell me do some exercise and tell me what is value is to be a a into a plus b is always a okay b and c are absorbed actually oh, sorry b is absorbed that's why it is called absorption law okay and then uh, we have a plus ab in r form and a plus ab in r form is again a okay you can take a out as a common and in bracket you will find 1 plus b 1 plus b is always 1 so 1 into a is again a is it clear and then the de morgan de morgan's law de morgan's law de morgan de morgan law is uh, very important and is it is states that if a dot b you take the complement then it becomes equal to a bar plus b bar okay that means complement the each digit and uh, replace the and operation by r operation okay if i take the complement of this i find a bar plus b bar and in r form it becomes if i take the complement of a plus b bar then what i will find a bar dot b bar a bar ended with b bar okay these are uh, the theorems which you can use for simplifying uh, those complex boolean expressions okay so here uh, let me take few examples the first one is it's very simple example y equal to ab bar plus ab okay you can use the theorems given in the table and try to simplify this expression okay a i can take a common here okay then in bracket i am left with b plus b bar b bar plus b okay b plus b bar you know always gives us 1 as per the table as per the assumptions of this boolean algebra so it becomes a into 1 that is equal to a okay then you can take another example let's say that the y is b plus c a into c plus a bar b okay please try to simplify this equation please note that uh, in ke in this case in the simplification the in results are not unique that is one of the problem of boolean algebra okay that means uh, the two students may get the two different 
final result. But if the truth table satisfies the both uh, final results, I mean if the both are similar to that of the original uh, function, both will be correct. Okay. So, have you done that? Huh? Okay, so let me solve this for you. I can write here that B in bracket C plus A bar B plus C A in the bracket C plus A bar B. Okay, then it is equal to B C plus B. A bar B plus C A C plus C A A bar B. Okay. So, I can write here Y is to be B C plus what about this B A bar B? B into B is always 1. Okay it is b a bar b okay so you know that b b is always b so i can write it a bar b or b a bar both are same okay so it is uh, better write a bar b a comes first then a c c a c c c c and c is c and therefore it becomes a c and finally, this A A bar becomes 0. So, C A A bar C becomes 0. Okay. C A A bar B becomes 0. So, Y becomes B C plus A bar B plus A C. Okay. And how do you know that uh, this given simplified result is correct? So, to verify that you can write the truth table for this function and as well as for the original function if you want to check that. Okay. If both are same, then you will see that uh, your simplification is correct because both functions have to perform the same logical, I mean uh, same logical operation. Okay. Is it clear? Okay, let me finish this lecture with this uh, example. I told you that these logic gates are used to uh, implement the digital circuits. Okay. So, for example, if I have to implement an half header circuit, how can I use those logic gates to implement this half header? Okay. Half header means uh, basically it is a 2 bit adder, it does not consider the carry of the previous state. Okay. That means uh, it, it will simply add the 2 digital digit. Okay, let us say that the one is A and another input is B. So, it will add A plus B. Okay. So, let me first write the truth table for this half adder. If the two inputs are A, B and output is, okay. if there are two uh, inputs that are A and B, so you will find these combinations 0, 0 are 0 1 1 0 or 1 1. Okay. So, in case of 0 0 what you find your summation is 0. Okay. 0 1 means your sum is 1. In case of 1 0 your sum is 1, but when there are 2 inputs and both are 1 then your sum becomes 0 and you also find a carry. Okay. 
So, to define uh, this I mean the output of there should be two output in this half header circuit. One should address the sum part and the another one should address the carry part. Okay. For example, if the both inputs are 0, 0, the sum is 0, carry is also 0. Okay. When 0, 0, 1 are the inputs, then sum is 1, carry is 0. When inputs are 1 and 0, sum is 1, carry is 0. Okay. And when both inputs are 1, the sum is 0 and carry is 1. Okay. So, you can implement this uh, truth table are these characteristics using logic gates. Okay. So, you can see here that we have to implement two function, one is S and another is C, where S is referring the sum output and C is referring the carry output in this case. Okay. And you can also notice the characteristics for the sum output. That means, when the both inputs were 0, output was 0. 0 1 output is 1, 1 0 1 and 1 1 then output is 0. So, you can compare this output with that of those uh, logic gates which we have discussed earlier. Okay. So, which logic gate is more similar to the sum case? XOR gate. In XOR gate, XOR gate I told you compares two digit and when the both inputs are same, it gives 0 output. Okay. And when the both inputs are different, it gives one output. So, you see here 0 0 both are same gives 0 output, 0 1 both inputs are different, it gives one output 1 0 1 and 1 1 0. Okay. And what about carry? Carry for the carry you can see that carry is 1 when both inputs are 1, otherwise 0. That means, it is simply a matching with the characteristics of AND gate. Okay. So, to implement a half header, what you need? You need to have a, an XR gate and a AND gate. Okay. And the implementa implementation may be like this. We have one XR gate, two input XR gate. The inputs are in this case A and B. This is our sum output and to take the carry output, we can apply both inputs to an AND gate which gives us carry as the output. Okay. So, here you can see a simple implementation of an half header using logic gate. Similarly, even the biggest processor of the day are implemented using the basic logic gates. Okay. And these logic gates are uh, basically implemented using the active elements like transistors, VJT and MOSFETs. Okay. So, let us stop here today.